In today's video we're going to animate mount and unmount events of React components. We'll start with a simple example in which we'll animate when a component appears and disappears from the screen. Then we'll take a look at how to do the same but for a collection of components. And finally we'll take a look at animations of these events for a collection of components but in a sequence. Meaning that the animation will be a sequence of shorter animations one after the other. We're going to use the React Spring library which is an excellent React library to create animations and it conveniently has a hook to animate the mount and unmount events of a component. Let's take a look how it works. We'll get started by creating a new project using Create React App. We will also install the React Spring library which we will use to create the animations. In this video I'm going to use the newest version of this library which is version number 9. Now that we have a fresh React project running, let's open it in our editor. First, let's remove all the code that was provided for us by default by Create React App. I'm also going to replace the CSS with some basic simple styling. First, we have this background color. We have some styles to add padding and to center our content. But the main thing here is this item object that we're going to animate. We give it a width and a height, uh, we center it, we we'll give it the background color and some styling to make it look nicer. So at the moment if we'll refresh our browser, all we have is an empty page with the background color that we specified. So let's add elements for these classes. We'll add a container for this element. We'll also add a button to mount and unmount our item. And we'll place the item that we're going to animate within our container. Now we want to make our example work by adding some code to this mount button that will first of all toggle its label from mount to unmount. And second, it will hide and show this element that we're going to animate. To do that, we'll import the use state hook from React. We'll add a boolean variable and we'll call it is visible. It will default to false because when we first load the page, our item will be hidden. And then when we click the button, we want to toggle the visibility of this item. Then we want to hide or show our item based on this variable. So now when we click this button, it shows and hides our element. Let's also change the label of our button. So this is what we built so far. We have this mount unmount button that hides and shows this element. Let's add some animations. So instead of simply appearing on the screen, this element will slide down and appear from the bottom. And then when it unmounts, instead of simply disappearing, it will slide down and gradually disappear. In order to add the animation, we're going to import the use transition hook from React Spring. This hook returns a function. We'll see in a moment how to use it. Uh, let's define it. It accepts two arguments. First, our state variable, and second is the configuration object. We're going to replace the way we display our item. So instead of using is visible, we're going to use this transition function, which we just created using the use transition hook. This function receives a callback with two arguments. The first one is style, and the second one is item. It works in a very similar way to how we displayed the item previously. We check the is visible variable and dependent on the value of it, we displayed either the element or an empty string. Now instead we check this item variable. If it's positive, we'll display the element, otherwise an empty string. The other thing we need to do is instead of using div directly, we'll use a component provided by React Spring. By using this element from React Spring, we'll get efficient animations. We need to remember, uh, and every time we want to animate some element, we need to prefix it with uh, this animated variable. Let's import it from React Spring. And finally, this element will be animated using the style attribute. And we get the styles as an object as a first argument to our callback. So let's pass it to our element. Our animation is going to be defined using this configuration object that is currently empty. But what we created so far is enough to show and hide our element. So we can see that our demo works as before. Our button hides and shows our element, but now we can easily add animations to the mount and unmount events. 
We're going to set up our animation using this configuration object. And it's going to accept three attributes from, enter, and leave. These are going to be the three states of our animation. The enter state describes the item as it appears currently when it's completely visible. The from state is from before the mount animation began. In our case, we want the item to be somewhere at the bottom of the screen and its opacity set to zero. And then leave is after the unmount animation has completed. Let's take a look at our item to determine how our animation should look like. First, we want to set the position of this item to be relative to the current position. We want the position of this item on the Y axis to begin from somewhere at the bottom of the screen, maybe somewhere around here. And the left position to be slightly to the left of the element, maybe like this. And we want to have this item gradually appear as it slides up. So we'll set the opacity to a very low value in the beginning. So this will be the beginning of our mounting animation. The item will slide from the bottom and slowly appear here. So we want the opacity to go from zero to one as the item appears. Then we want it to slide from the left to the right and from the bottom to the top. So let's configure this mounting animation using our object. Instead of setting the position to relative and the top and the left attributes, we can simply use the shortcuts provided by React Spring. So we can set the X axis to minus 100 the Y axis from the beginning of the animation, let's set it to 800 and the opacity will be zero. So this is the beginning of our mounting animation. Now let's describe how we want our item to look after it appears on the screen. We want the X axis to be reset to zero, same for the Y axis, and we want the item to be fully visible so we'll set the opacity to one. So let's take a look at our mounting animation. As you can see, our animation works. And it's really nice how React Spring makes it so easy to configure this animation. We simply had to specify the beginning and the end of the mount animation, and React Spring did everything else for us. So now let's also animate the unmount event. When we unmount the object, it will be very similar to the way it appears when it first mounts, but the X axis, instead of going away to the left, it will disappear to our right. So we need to change the X axis from minus 100 to plus 100. So let's see how it works. This was the mount animation. It appeared from X minus 100 to zero. And then when it unmounts, it disappears, but instead of going to the left, it goes to the right. So this is our first example. Now we know how to easily animate the mount and unmount events of an element. And now let's take a look at what happens if we want to animate several elements instead of just one. By the way, if you find this video useful, please hit the like button so it will reach more people. And if you would like to be notified about more videos such as this one, uh, which are short and practical videos that teach you something you can use right away, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's make a small change to our code. Currently, we use this Boolean variable to determine if our item should be visible or not. But what if instead of a boolean, we used an array of items? Let's try to recreate the same example as we have now, but with an array instead of a boolean. If we'll have an empty array, we'll treat it as if the value is false and nothing should be displayed. If we have an array with a single item, which is an empty object, we will treat it as if there is a single item that needs to be displayed, uh, same as it works now. So let's try to adjust our code. Instead of is visible, we'll call our variable items. We want to set it to an empty array in the beginning because we want our item to be hidden. Use transition accepts an array as well besides a boolean. Instead of calling set is visible, we'll call set items. And now we'll check if we have an array with a single element, we will uh, reset it to an empty array or otherwise we will pass an array with a single object like we described here. And we'll apply the same to the label of our button. So now our example should work exactly the same as before. However, now instead of using a Boolean, we use an array. And the reason we changed to an array is because with an array, we can animate multiple items instead of just one. Let's see what happens if we try to change our single item to be an array of multiple items. We'll add two more items and try to run our example again and see what happens. You can see that now we can animate three items instead of just one. So three items will be rendered by React Spring using this code. 
Let's try to add some spacing in between these items. So we currently pass empty objects, but what if we passed the y-axis value of each item after it is mounted to the screen? So our first item will be minus 100 on the y-axis, so it will be higher. Second item will be at zero. And the third item will be at uh, 100. So let's see how we can pass these attributes and then load them here in the configuration object and use them for each of the items. So instead of being positioned at the same location, they will be positioned by the values that we pass to them. What we can do here is change enter from an object to a callback. What we did is we changed enter to accept a callback as an argument. And this callback has this argument called item. And this item represents each one of the items that we pass to our array. Then we can use the y attribute of each one of these items to set the value that we want our element to have once it's mounted to the screen. So let's try to see how it works. So our from and leave stayed exactly the same. But now when our item is rendered, all of the items share the x and the opacity attributes. But for each item, we set a different y value. First item gets its own, then the second one, then the third one. The gaps are a little too big. Let's change it a little bit. Also, React Spring provides another useful shortcut, and it is called delay. So instead of displaying the items immediately together, we can delay their appearance simply by adding a delay value. And now let's add a delay attribute to each one of the elements. So the appearance of the first item will be delayed by 200, then the second one by 400, and the third one by 600. Let's see how it looks. So now instead of appearing at the same time and at the same location, we added custom attributes to each one of the items. So all the items will be rendered using this code, using a single element. However, they'll have different attributes when they're animated and when they're mounted. And of course, we can do the same for the starting position for the mount and for the unmount. As a final step, let's change the final animation to a sequence of shorter animations. So currently our animation happens in one transition. It goes from here to here. Let's change it to instead happen in two separate animations, one after the other. So instead of going diagonally, squares will first go up and then to their position as we define for each item. To do that, we can call our next function more than once. I've changed the function to be asynchronous and we'll also await the result each time we call the next function. So the first time we call this function, we don't want to make any changes on the x axis. So we'll only animate on the y axis. Then we want the squares to move from this location to their final position when they're mounted. So for this animation, we don't want any movement on the y axis. We also already have the opacity set to 1 from the first animation, so there's no point of doing it again. And we don't need the delay anymore. So now our mount animation actually consists of two quick animations, one after the other. First the square come up and then move to their final location. Let's see if it works. Now our elements, instead of going directly to their place, first go to their position as defined in the first call to the next function and then to the second call. Just to make it nicer, let's also configure the width and the height of the element when it mounts. So this is the final animation we created in two stages. So in this video, we learn how to animate mount and unmount events of React components. Please don't forget to like this video so it will reach more viewers. And if you find this video useful and would like to be notified when I upload more videos about React, please subscribe to this channel.